Hey y'all, it is Cassie Bollinger. I wanted to go over what to do when you have pre-orders for either a limited time offer, an LTO, or maybe it's the beginning of the month. So like the first of the month when we have a large release, like the, what's coming up for the holiday collection. When you have these orders that your customers are wanting, taking a pre-order that's not ran by Cincy basically means that you are getting the information you are calculating the cost of each item along with their tax and or their shipping. Um, it may be coming to you so you don't have to worry about the shipping, but if it's going to them, you want to make sure that you are calculating it correctly. What you do in the system is when you go to your workstation, you want to make sure that you create a individual order for that customer. Now you can attach that to other parties. Um, that way you're still getting the credit on those parties, but those are done separately. Now, if you have enough pre-orders, then you can create one party and add them in there as guests in the party. And you can add to their cart if you're closing everything out all at once. I know it may sound a little bit complicated, but I'm going to attach a video that you will get to know and watch me go through creating just an individual order. And then secondary is doing a whole party for all the pre-orders that you have being shipped out either directly or all coming to you so that you know how to process the orders. So stay tuned and watch for that video. Okay, so now we're on the laptop and we are about to create either an individual order or we're going to create a party and add all of our orders because they're going to be over $200 for an LTO. Here we go. Now on my screen, I am in my workstation. I've already logged in. What we're gonna do is if we have an individual order, so we only have one pre-order or maybe two, but it's not gonna be over 200 so you can close out a party. What we're gonna do is we're gonna start with individual order. When we go in here, it's gonna ask for the customer. Now, is this for you or is it for the customer? If we're shipping it to the customer or even if you're shipping it to yourself, you still want to put it under the customer's name. The reason why is that you wanna be able to keep track of all the orders that they've had since they've been your customer. So here we go. We're gonna type in test. The person's not in there, so we're gonna go ahead and create a new customer. Their first name and last name is test. We're just gonna put in a phone number. We're not gonna put in an email. We're just gonna unclick this order and shipping notifications. Here, we're gonna decide what party to add it to. This party needs to be one that's already open. If you haven't opened a party, then please go back to the video on how to start a new party for one of your guests or for you as a catch-all. We're gonna go ahead and select in here. I'm just gonna pick May Bloom. Um, it's all going to be shipping to my address because the customer is local, and that way I have access to be able to package it up and have them pick it up. We do save and continue. And here is all their information. Now, at this point, since it's a pre-order and we aren't able to order right now, you would leave this as is. You'd be able to come back to this individual order under open orders at the top of the screen. So here it says orders. You would be able to find it in open orders down towards the bottom in the individual orders. Now, when it's time, you want to go ahead and log on to your workstation or to your PWS early enough about an hour before release. So I would say about 11 o'clock if the release is at 12 p.m. Central. Now, again, when it's in the morning and it releases really early, I'm in Central Standard Time, so that would be 2 a.m. I would go through this whole same process to do pre-orders at the first of the month or if they're even released during the day um, on whichever day they're released. Now, this is how you create basically a um, 
your customer's information for individual orders. This is for anything that's going to be under $200 for each customer or for a combination of customers. Now, if you do have over $200, that's going to be a qualifying party and you want to put it all under one party. I'm going to show you the steps on how to do that. When you go into your workstation under the top, you just go to orders and you go all the way down to create a party. With this being said, you just follow the steps and you fill in the information that you need to. We're just going to put test, continue. This information, again, you can use it as you are the host because it's all of it's going to come to you. If it's all going to go to your customer, then go ahead and put the customer's name in there. We're going to go ahead and use test, test. All the information is still there, say, from the last time we did the individual order. This is why you want to make sure you're putting your customers' names into their orders because it's going to be easier to find and you won't get messed up on different information the second or third or fourth time. And plus, it saves you money. Again, we have to decide if it's shipping to my address, the host's address, um, or if it's a one-time temporary. We're just going to leave it as my address and save and continue. This one does require a address. So let's, and we are going to do test at gmail.com. Now, of course, with your customer, you want to fill out all the information of your customer to make sure that all the information is there. You do need their phone number, their address, their email address. They're going to get notifications every time that something ships. And that way, in case you are not um, on the best uh, system for follow-up, at least then Cincy will send out an automatic email letting them know that their order has shipped along with their tracking number. We're going to do save and continue. And from here, again, the information is what you want to change. I always change the title. I put the person's name, come party with test, test. Um, on the body, I always change it up just a little bit so it talks about me. Um, and then again, all the other information down below can be modified in any way, shape, or form. On here, on the end date, because we know that the uh, pre-orders are going to be coming pretty quick, I'm not even going to change this. Since he defaults this to a two week from the day you open the party, I'm just going to do continue. And this is going to take us to the party for test. When I go in here to go to party orders, this is how I'm going to be able to add all of your other guests. Now I can add myself as a guest. And the reason why I would do this is if I needed to send something to myself or maybe the perpetual reward was not used by a party or other items, you can have the perpetual reward sent to you. Let me go ahead and add products to cart. So we here is the actual cart. We are looking through here. Nothing is in here yet. You are set up to go. Um, this is where you would add another guest if you had multiple people that you had over $200 worth of orders. That way, when you came in and after the queue, you were able to enter in each person's order. Each one, you see this right here, drop ship options. This gives you the option to drop ship directly out of this party and not come to you. You get a, basically an all-in-one stop shop on a party that's over 200. So again, make sure you have over 200 in um, sales and you can create a party and have everything shipped and have it all in one spot to make your LTO a fast and easy process. So this concludes the way I do my LTOs, the limited time offers, or any pre-orders that I process and it's not through Cincy. I make sure that I collect all the information and I collect payment before the date of the release. Now, everybody's a little bit different on this next topic. I do not collect credit card numbers. If it was a very, very close friend of mine, I would do that because I trust me and I know them and I know that there, if there was any problems then they would contact me. 
for a customer that maybe is my their first or second time being with me, I would not accept their credit card number because I don't want to be responsible for it if something were to happen. However you decide to take payment, I use Zelle, Venmo, Cash App, PayPal, uh, Facebook Pay. There's a lot of different processes that I take to collect money from my customers to make it a smooth and easy transaction. You can decide what is the best way for you. And you need to make that decision early on just to make sure that you don't have any problems later on when you're trying to collect money and now you don't even know how you're going to do it. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below. Please like and subscribe to my channel. Let me know if there's any other things that you would like me to uh, show you guys and walk you through. I hope you all have a blessed day and I will see you guys later.